Hi, Andrew from Kensington Wine Market here for your single sample session or trample tasting of our Gordon McPhail Connoisseur's Choice Bladnock 1988 33 year old Kensington Wine Market cask. I know that's a mouthful, but it's a gorgeous whiskey. So if we're going to have a really long title for something, it might as well be for something beautiful and rare and precious. Um, but before we get to the whiskey, let's talk quickly about Bladnock. It is one of the Lowland Distilleries, originally established in 1817 in the town of Bladnock, a beautiful little um, hamlet outside of Wigton, Scotland's book town. A little bit of useless trivia there for you, um, along the river. And uh, the distillery, you know, it operated just fine until around 1911 when it came into the hands of an Irish firm called Dunville. Uh, Dunville, uh, you, some of you might recognize, was a brand of whiskey that was revived uh, in the last decade or so, was producing a gorgeous single malt. Um, they might even be a distillery again. I should probably look into that. Uh, lots of changes in Irish whiskey. Regardless, uh, the Dunville folks were running the distillery um, until 1937. They tried to sell it to DCL, who, which was one of the forerunners of what would become Diageo. Um, but Diageo, or I shouldn't say Diageo, DCL turned them down. The owners of Dunville got spooked because DCL said there was no future for Irish whiskey. Uh, so they liquidated uh, Bladnock and its stock. And most distressingly of all, the equipment apparently was shipped to Sweden, if I'm not mistaken. I remember reading that somewhere. Anyway, uh, back to the modern era. Um, the distillery reopened in 1956. Uh, it was part of Inverhouse for a period of time. Uh, after that, it went into the hands of Arthur Bell & Sons, which is another one of those companies that became part of what we now call Diageo. And uh, when Diageo happened in 1993, United Distillers, uh, Bladnock was officially decommissioned. Uh, for some reason then, this lovely man who I had the chance to meet many years ago uh, by the name of Raymond Armstrong, bought the distillery um, from Diageo uh, because he'd been there, he'd spent some time there. Uh, interestingly, his family, the Armstrongs uh, under Dunville had previously owned the site. There was a connection there. And uh, he decided to buy it along with his brother because they had visions of turning it into a vacation destination. Um, that never really quite happened. Um, and in 1994, uh, sorry, 2014, he had to turn things over. Now there was distillation between 1993 and 2014, uh, intermittent distillation. Uh, at first when he bought the distillery though, he wasn't given permission to make any whiskey. Uh, Diageo relaxed those terms a few years later, gave him the permission to make about 100,000 liters of, of spirit a year. I don't think to the best of my knowledge that that quantity was ever reached. Uh, Gordon McPhail was obviously still buying fillings of it, although this is pre-Raymond Armstrong. This is still Arthur Bell and Son days back in 1988 because Gordon McPhail famously does not typically buy on the open market. As far as we know, they don't buy on the open market. They're always filling new make spirit into their own cask, which is one of the things that sets them apart. More about that in a second. Still on Bladnock, 2014, um, Raymond Armstrong put the distillery into administration. Uh, it was acquired by an Australian yogurt tycoon um, in 2015, David Pryor. They did a huge refurbishment, rebranded, launched again um, in 2017, started production in earnest in 2017. And it's a going concern again today uh, with uh, bottlings roughly between 25, 26 years of age and then some considerably younger ones as well. Uh, but this is all pre-Raymond Armstrong, pre-David Pryor. This is Arthur Bell and Sons era. Bladnock and some of those whiskeys from 88, 1990 in particular, are absolutely gorgeous. Now, Gordon McPhail, one of our favorite firms to work with, Elgin-based, family-owned, fourth-generation independent bottler, started out as a grocer. Uh, they do things a little differently. They've become, in our opinion, the gold standard of how to... Um, not just do independent bottlings, but how to treat whiskey. They put it into their own casks. They don't trust the distilleries to, to buy them, that they're gonna put them in the best possible wood. So they buy spirit, put it in their own casks, mature it, and then bottle it when they feel it has reached, I suppose, its best point in the maturation cycle. Um, 
but they're an incredibly fascinating company. We've talked about them in some of our other tasting videos and we're just very fortunate to have a great relationship with them. They offered us this cask. Now, a 1988 33-year-old Bladneck would be a bit of a daunting purchase, uh, even for a business like Kensington Wine Market, because this retails for $1,400 a bottle. It's not inexpensive, um, but the only reason this happened is the outturn, 53 bottles, just 53 bottles. This was an incredibly leaky or incredibly porous or I suppose um, a cask visited frequently by people in the warehouse for a dram uh, cask because 53 bottles, even after 33 years, that's a very low outturn from a cask that would have had 250 liters of spirit filled into it originally. Um, so this famously was one of those whiskeys that when we got the samples, we sampled them, or before even sampling them, I, I would have made the declaration, there's no way we're bottling a 1988 Bladnock you know, it's gonna to be too expensive. Uh, you know, the whiskey will be good. We'll never be able to sell it all. But it was one of those ones where I had to eat my words because uh, we sampled the whiskey and then when we appreciated there was just 53 total bottles in the cask, we, we knew we had to have it. So as I mentioned before, distilled 1988, bottled after 33 years at 54.1% in a refill sherry oxid cask, bottled for the good guys at Kensington Wine Market nonetheless. Uh, let's give our Bladnock a taste. Now, you probably noticed I had mine in the glass at the start of the tasting. Now, I could claim that that's because I wanted to let it open up. I wanted to let it breathe. Uh, the fact of the matter is I was interrupted by the doorbell. I had even done a fresh cut. I pulled the foil off beautifully in my first take. Anyway, that was totally wasted. Um, but letting a whiskey like this have some time to breathe, especially when you open a fresh bottle, I think is really crucial because it's, you know, it's been in the bottle, it's been in a fairly stable state for a period of time, and letting it sort of start to express itself can be really crucial and really important. So I've also busted out the old school blenders glass for this because this is a rare, special, old, delicate whiskey, and I want to give it um, its best showing. So starting on the nose, what do we get? Oh, it's decadent, it's creamy, it's tropical. There's a nice toastiness there, some soft spices, there's elegant floral tones. These are all kind of those signature elements that you get in um, Bladnock from this period in time. Uh, grapefruit tones, tropical fruits, mango, papaya, uh, manuka honey, macadamia nuts, lots of layers there. There's some nice oak spice developing as well too. On the palate, oh man, the palate, as beautiful as the nose is, the palate takes things to the next level. It's incredibly uh, creamy, uh, fruity, tropical, floral still. Um, more of that Manuka honey, clotted cream, going into um, dried apricots, uh, cantaloupe, and then into those more exotic mango, papaya uh, flavors as well too. got a wonderful mouthfeel. Um, you can taste that it's cast strength, but it's not hot, it's not sharp, it's not rough. It's got a really nice balance to it. It's coating. Those floral tones come in, there's sugars and spices. This is on the lighter side of things as far as flavor profile goes, but this is kind of a nice fusion of both cask flavors, but also spirit character and then that ma magic oxidative quality that comes with uh, a refill cask after a long period of time, such as in this case, 33 years. Warming, fruity, spicy, uh, very pretty. Uh, you know, this is uh, one of the most uh, what well, is the most expensive cask we've ever bought this a store um, but it is absolutely beautiful it, it's a, one of the oldest I mean it's certainly up there it's not the oldest but it's one of the oldest we've had the chance to bottle as well uh, but it ticks all the right boxes like there's that tropical fruit style there there's a little bit of a waxiness coming through as well too um, this is an old school very fruity creamy floral rich bottling and it's pretty and I, I think uh, you're gonna love it I hope you love it you're tasting it along with me uh, 
no idea how long these bottles are going to last because again it's, it's at a much higher price point than uh, any of the other single casks we have in the store at the moment but it rises to that occasion uh, it's from 1988 the year of the Calgary Olympics Eddie the Eagle Edwards and such uh, so nostalgia for, for some of us in the city here uh, would come out with this too but ultimately this is just a beautiful Gladnock and a beautiful 30 something refill cask whiskey um, I really hope you like it. Big thank you to our friends Gordon McPhail and Authentic One Experience for lining this up for us because uh, this wasn't on our radar and I'm glad they, uh, they showed it to us because we couldn't possibly have skipped bobbing it. Cheers.